right, today we're headed over to the powder coating shop. We're gonna run through the process of powder coating rims. Super excited to show you how all that goes and we're gonna talk business at the end, so hang tight. As a kid, I always dreamed of growing up, moving to a huge city and working in a high profile finance job. But like all good plans, things changed. Fast forward a few decades where my husband and I are running a steel fabrication business together where I spent the last decade learning the tricks of the trade while bringing some pretty dope business knowledge to the table too. It really is the best of both worlds. Go wild, go wild like an animal. So come with me as I get down and dirty and into the nitty gritty of how it works, showing you the tricks of the trade, along with bringing in some of my business expertise to elevate it to the next level. It's a little how-to and a little business 101, all bundled into one nice little package. Hey, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Good, you ready to get started? Yes. So tell me what we're doing today. We got a set of rims a customer brought in that he wants to get powder coated black. Okay. They got a lot of road rash on them, curb rash. What's, we're gonna clean uh, them up. What's curb rash? Uh, when you get too close to the curb and you rub against it, it's the outer face of the rim, it scrapes it all up and makes it real rough. What happens first to get these to, like started in the process? So first we're gonna put them in a stripper, it's called B17 acid. It take off anything, any paint, epoxy, powder coating, anything off the wheels. We'll put them in the acid, probably about an hour, hour and a half to get everything off. Then we'll pressure wash them and we'll put them in the oven for about 20 minutes to let them dry. And then we'll put them in the blast booth and let them blast them. After he gets done blasting, we'll come back, we'll sand off the rough edges, like where the curb rash is, yeah. and try to smooth it out the best we can. And then we'll coat. And then coating. Once we get them smoothed out, we'll wipe them down and then hang them up, ground them off on the cart. And then we'll put the first coat on, put them in the oven. I like to do the second coat hot. It just makes the powder stick so much better and it flows out a lot better. Excellent, well let's get started then. Goggles, gloves, maybe an apron. Yeah. It is pretty bad, as you can see. <laughs> we might need to edit that out. <laughs> All right, puller. I'm trying, I'm trying to play it cool right now, but that stinks so bad. And it's burning, it's burning everything. My nose, that's, that's rough. Oh, you ready? It's burning me. Ugh. So what is this tank? This tank right here is a neutralizing tank. So it the burning should go away soon? <laughs> yes, if you got in there, but it's not going to pull it off of you. Next, we're gonna put them in the oven to dry off and outgas. Killed two birds with one stone. Explain outgassing to outgassing, me. Outgassing, like aluminum's real porous, any gases that are trapped inside, the heat will push it out and it'll burn off all the oils, and whatever road grind might be on the wheels. What happens if you don't outgas? It'll have a really rough finish, and in some places it'll bubble up and it won't look really good at all. Okay, all right, I'm gonna help. Do my heavy lifting for the day. So how long do you feel like is a good enough amount of time to outgas these? Um, I usually outgas for about an hour and a half okay. at 465 degrees. I always outgas at a higher temperature than what you're going to cure it at. Oh, that's a good idea. Which is 400. Back me up. Tell me what's happening. They just been in the oven drying off, right? They've been in the oven outgas and drying off. We're going to pull them out, take them over to blast and get a blast. Okay. Walk me through this process. If we dipped all of these in the acid and they're down to bare metal now, 
why did they have to get blasted in the first place? So we're blasting them. You want to blast them so you have something for the powder coating to adhere to. It won't adhere to a smooth surface. So we blast the extra fine media and give it a little rough profile. But it's not actual sand, right? Yeah, I think this is actually coal slag. Yeah. And then they have sand and glass beads also. Right. We used to blast with actual sand and then the environmental agency shut us down. <laughs> so now we use coal slag. So that hood he put on, that airflow goes into the hood and it keeps the dust out of there. to look at this under a microscope you would see little peaks and valleys and that's what allows the powder to stick really well once we put it on so this is the way when somebody says white metal this is what they're talking about okay so sand paper is next no we'll get them up on the table and just make sure that he didn't miss any spots in the blast booth we'll blow them off and then we'll start masking them off okay cool Without their blown off, we'll just look over them, just make sure he didn't miss anything in the blast booth, like road grime or paint that's stuff on there still. If we find some, we'll scrape it off, like right here. Oh, gosh. So that's what we're looking for. Oh, it's like going to the dentist. Right. Except I'm sure theirs are a lot cleaner. <laughs> Let's hope. I hope so. Let's hope. Now we just go over the edge, the face of it with sandpaper. If you rub your finger across it, you'll feel rough edge. We'll knock it down smooth. We don't yeah. want to dig into the metal though, we just want to smooth it out. Gotcha. This is the road rash that cut grooves into it. We won't get rid of it, you'll still see it after we coat it, but we can smooth it off, it'll be less noticeable. I think they're good. Yeah, they feel good. Okay, now we'll mask it off. The reason so, we're gonna mask it, yeah. this is where the wheel goes onto the hub on the vehicle. It needs to be a smooth surface, otherwise it's gonna be vibrating while you're going down the road. It's not because it's a machine surface, so it has to beat up perfectly. So we don't coat that area right there on any other. So we'll just tape this off right here and we'll cut it out. And we'll coat the inside of this. This is the only surface we're not gonna coat. Okay. Everything else will be coated. So we're not concerned with oxidation or resting on that probably once your hub gets put on because it won't ever be an exposed surface and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of grease involved. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There will be a lot of grime and stuff though for the brake dust and all that. Yeah. It's not going to rust, of course, because they're aluminum, so you'll never know. Oh, fine. I guess that's why I can pick these up because they're aluminum. Not steel. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and hang these up on the cart. So you just put it on there flush and it just hangs like that on the cart. Oh yeah. We got a hook that we put in and it just hangs. Nice. So it's kind of cool because we have our own fabrication shop as well. So all of our carts are custom made for exactly what we need. So this has been really handy. And these um, casters, we used to make our own casters. These are heat tolerant up to like 4,000 degrees. They're called um, 
think they're called heat eaters uh, from Matt Caster. Oh, and these parts get weighted down depending on what we have with some pretty heavy stuff. And the casters we were making were kind of collapsing under their own weight. These are built, built for high pressure, high heat, so they're really nice to have. I don't know if you've gathered that the hook sewage and cleaned as well, so that you've got good contact, that you can follow the charge all the way from the cart all the way to the thing that's getting coated. Um, so, because without a good charge or a good ground, you're not going to get a good stick, and then the powder doesn't look good. So, I'm just going to make sure that they're actually grounded and they're touching bare metal. We look the ground, or the positive up to this one touches the negative, we'll ohm it out, and it'll be, and we're good. Right, so this is called an ohms meter, and it just lets you know that you've got a good ground. what they call Faraday areas, which are like in the corners, well, deep incesses, any of that stuff. Typically the powder likes to just go to each side of it instead of get in the well. I think. That's why I do rims hot. If you do it hot, as soon as the powder hits, it closes out and it's just stuck to it. So you're going to give these like one final blow down, right? We will. Because First we'll blow the booth out and get all that white powder out of there since it just came from white. I got we're going to switch over to black. Because you would get like, some like contamination, yeah, like white sure. dust could settle on the black rim. Yeah. Okay. So now since he just coated white, we got to clean the whole system out, all the lines, okay. the gun and everything. We don't want any white in there. Gotcha. One thing you want to look for whenever you take the gun apart and clean it, put this little electrode on the end. That's what gives the powder the positive charge after coming through the gun. So these are different tips. This tip right here is the fan tip, and this is for Faraday areas, like where I was talking about on the wheels, like inside the recess part for the lug nuts. Yeah. It shoots more straight out than as the fan, kind of like a cone. So we run a Gima OptiFlex 2 in our shop. That's this type of gun. They are, Gima does have a newer, bigger, battier, assier version. This is top of the line, and we've been really happy with it. We've been coding for the last six years. We have two of these done. Love them. This is called a box feed gun, literally because you sit the box on the vibrator. In a minute, this is going to get turned on, and this bed shakes and vibrates, and it creates a little bit of a fluidized bed of the powder so that the gun itself can pick up the powder and shoot it through the hose. So this is a box system gun. Works really well for batch system shops like ours. All right, so we'll give these wheels one more blow off with the air, and then we'll put them in and we'll start going. Yeah, hell yeah. Oh, you know what we forgot? We need to cut the center out. Oh, yeah. So the next step is we're going to ground the car. Oh, I yeah. see that's not done yet. We need to do that. Yeah. If you don't ground this car and you start spraying and you touch the car, it will like show butt up. Yeah, for sure. So this is an add-on to our carts that we had. We used to just take those like car cable clamps and clamp onto the cart, but so we had so much problem with the with it staying put on the cart because that's really hard and to open up and get a clamp on and then they would fall off. We used to clamp right on here. There just wasn't enough room and the cart would uh, deep would fall and we would know it and then you'd get shocked in the booth and it 
here. So these little pigtails became the solution where we just got these guys. So now yeah. it's protected, it doesn't get coated, and so we've always got a clean connection point with that quick connect, and it helps out substantially. So that was a really smart move um, after trial here and trial here. Okay, so now it's grounded through here. So this is a, a six-foot earth I think it's a six-foot ground. Yeah, so we've got a six-foot earth ground. So it's just through the concrete all the way to the ground, and that's what gives us a really good ground for these parts. All right. Do you want to go first? No, you, want I want to walk you me through it. walk me through it. So we'll start off with the Faraday area, like we were talking about earlier, the hardest spot to get. in there. Yeah. It's the powder just wants to go to each flat surface and not on the corner. Yeah. Right. So put your gun more at an angle when you're at the corner when you've got the fan going. Yeah. At more of an angle so it'll be there a little bit better. Gotcha. Do you ever pick up the trigger or do you just No, hold? just hold the trigger down. That way that powder can keep blowing out evenly. And if you miss a spot, don't try to get it. We'll get it on the second go around. All right. Pull your gun back off of it. There you go. How far away are you shooting for? I usually come back about eight inches. They say six to eight inches. I usually come back to eight. I bet they do. I just feel like it covers better. If you get it too close, it winds up blowing the powder off the metal. All right, so you disconnect. Unhook it. We'll pull it out, put it in the oven. We'll put it in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes just to let it gel out a little bit. And then we'll pull it back out and we'll shoot them hot. And it's gonna cover it really nice. Gotcha. All right, go ahead and pull it. That's the time, it's 15 minutes. All right. So these are coming out of the oven. Just cook for 20 minutes at 425. Just to blow it out. We want right. to get it warm so we pull it so out. So it's not a full cure, no. but what's going to be tricky about in this booth in the coating process is that we're dealing with hot rims and the hot part. Yes. So we're just going to be really careful about where our bodies are. Try not to bump anything. Don't melt any hoses. Got it. It should be fun. In there. Yeah, as soon as it hits, it starts to melt. Gel out. But this is a lot harder code because you can't see as well. You can't see, you gotta pay a lot of attention to what right. you're doing. You're looking and if at the gun like, starts to sputter, it'll shoot a piece out and it'll get a big clump right there. Oh my god. So right now you're just looking at like, oh, and it's so hot it's starting to flow. So you can't even tell really where you've been. Yeah, that's hard. So I like to just face, do all the faces while it's hot. Because that that's you know, what matters. Because that's what you're going to see. Right. So when the powder is done a short flow like that, where you just let it gel out for 20 minutes. If you were to look under that, at that under a microscope, you'd still see like soft tooth pattern on the powder, right? So it's, yes, you're still, it's not all I, the way I guess what out. I'm trying to say is we blasted this and, and got it rough, but you're not coating on top of a technically smooth surface at this point. The powder is still pretty rough. Still rough, yeah. And it won't get super glass smooth until it has a full cure on it. Yes, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So then coating hot like this, you shouldn't have any kind of issue with like delamination or the powder like peeling off because it will not at all. It's there. 
So I can tell now that the rims are cooling down because the powder isn't flowing quite that's as not. quick. Yep. So that's like your final run is where, I mean, or is that what time you're waiting on is for them to cool down so you know? Yeah. Because what I'm looking at is the sheen of the powder. Like it's not shiny, so it's not flowing. It's not flowing out. So right. like now you know you've got full coverage. Once yeah. And then once I go back, now that they're kind of cooled off a little bit, I'll go over the face of them one more time. And now just yeah. make sure that we got everything. That's awesome. All right, I think we got it. So now this is going to be the final cure. Uh, so the cure time on this powder is uh, 10 minutes at 400 degrees. So that means the wheel actually has to be at 400 degrees for 10 minutes right. to cure the powder out. So they're going to go in for about 45 minutes. We have a little chart. It's kind of tore up, but we're kind of checking stuff every now and then with the gun. So you just we have to give it a good, time. like that feeling of how thick your substrate is to know about how long it needs to go yeah. in the oven. Because it's not, it's not just 10 minutes in, it's 10 minutes once the, once once the metal gets to 400 degrees. Yes. Right. Yep. Okay, so we just put four rims in the oven. If I weren't here slowing you down, how long total would that take? Um, like from, from dip to finish? I would probably take three and a half hours from dip to finish. You got an hour in the acid, you know, ongoing process. Right. So. so if you, so since the acid is something else working, but not a man, and it's just doing its thing, then you can say that those rims probably took, if you're all in just for a set of four, it probably took you like two hours. Without that. Of your yeah. hands on, of yeah. your actual physical labor. Right, because once it's in the oven, you're not, you're able to move on to something else too. Yeah. Okay, so then we're at $500 for that cart. So that's $250 an hour times, let's say you work a nine hour day. It's 22.50 in the day, you work five days a week, you work 52 weeks a year, that's $585,000 that you could generate on just friends alone. It's a lot of money. On, on pretty much one guy's back, you don't have to have a whole lot of and labor. it's not even anything hard. Right. It's pretty simple. And our shop is kind of set up to be able to do a lot of bigger stuff, but you could do something like that in a much smaller space. You wouldn't have to have the carts that were this big or the or oven. The oven that, yeah. Any of that, yeah. Right. You could do rims in a much smaller more of a garage type setting. Yeah. You could definitely do that. That's a lot of money. It's badass. Okay. We just ran through a lot of numbers with Corey, and I wanna kind of back up and talk about the money that it would take to get started in the powder coating industry. So if you wanted to run through the entire process that we just did, you'd need about $125,000. That covers the dip tank, the chemical, the blast booth, the blast pot, the paint booth, cost of goods sold to get started, and a box feed gun. So at $135 an hour, and $125,000 of startup, you're looking at about three to four months of man hours, as long as you're willing to work about 10 hours a day, seven days a week, to recover all of your entry expenses, which isn't a bad margin. The one thing you'd need to consider is that probably when you're starting up, you're not gonna have 10 hours of work a day unless you invest heavily in marketing. Things like Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Spotify ads, the world's really your oyster when it comes to targeting your market. Just remember that in this day and age, people don't come to you. You find them and bring them to you. So investing in advertising is wildly important when you're a startup entrepreneur. Hey, you. Yeah, you. I need you to like and subscribe to this page so the YouTube algorithm can get this out to the people that need to see it. Listen, I'm an ENTJ in Myers-Briggs, a three on the Enneagram, and my love language is words of affirmation. So you've never met anyone more desperate for you to like and subscribe than me.